Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create an advanced landing page in your Squarespace website. A landing page is a page that's designed to focus on one specific offer. It could be a sales page or a freebie that you want someone to sign up to receive if they enter their email address. That's a common example of a landing page. To create this page, most people remove the main navigation and any extra links in the footer. So the main goal of this page is focused on taking that one specific action. In this tutorial, we'll be creating an advanced landing page. An advanced landing page has its own internal navigation. We're going to create a header and a footer for this specific page that contains links to content directly on the page, making sure that we're focused on that one goal action to either get the offer or purchase the product, whatever you decide is the main goal for your landing page. There are some important steps that we're going to take together to make this magic happen, and I've outlined all of them in the description below. But without further ado, I'll go ahead and share my screen and teach you exactly how to create an advanced landing page in Squarespace. Here we are inside Squarespace, and I've already made a basic landing page that has different sections of content. The very top section is an introduction, I have some information about the offer, then information about the person who created it, who created this and why, and finally, the chance to get the thing. Now, landing pages, they can be for products, they can be for newsletter sign-up options, but regardless, the concept of this advanced landing page is the same. We're going to replace this footer content and this header content with our own for the unique landing page. Before we get into any of that, I do want to show you that in my pages menu, I've added this landing page in the not linked section of my site. I didn't want it to be a part of my main navigation. It's here under not linked. All right, let's go ahead and create the custom header and the custom footer for our landing page. I'm going to select edit and here at the very top, we'll create our fake header section. I'll select add section and we'll add a blank one. Now, the first thing I want to do is add an image because here on my website, I have an image for my logo and that's what I want to create for this landing page header. I'll select add block. We'll add an image and clicking this plus sign, I can either upload a file or select one from my asset library. My logo is already in my asset library, so we'll just grab it right there and say add. Now, this is going to be way too big, so let's go ahead and reduce the size of that. There we go. I like that a lot better. All right, next up, we need to add the links that we'll have in the navigation that's specific for our landing page. I'm going to select add block and we'll add a simple block of text. Pulling this over to the side, I'm going to label this link more info. I want to keep these links super short and concise, and this will link to the about section of the site. I'm going to click this button here so we can add a link. Now we haven't created the anchor yet, but I know that I'm going to call it about. So I'm going to type hashtag about. That will be the name of the anchor that we create for our about section. This part's very important. Where it says open in new tab, I want you to toggle that off, okay? I want to make sure we stay here in this tab. Now for my own aesthetic reasons, I'm going to center this text horizontally and I'm going to center it vertically for this content block and we'll reduce the size of that because we've got more to add. All right, we've got our block there. Let's click this duplicate option here, move it over to the side and create a second anchor link. We'll go ahead and call this one meet the expert and we will link to a link we haven't created yet that will be labeled expert and I'll toggle this off. And again, for aesthetic reasons, I'd like to center this horizontally. It's already centered vertically. We're good to go there. All right, we've got one more link to add and we want this link to be a button. So I'm going to select add block and we'll add a button to our site. Now this button doesn't need to be so big, but we'll go ahead and knock it down to tertiary size. And I would like to select the fit option instead of fill, but those kind of aesthetic choices are totally up to you. This just suits the style for my own site. Now the content of this button, I'm going to change the text to say, get the offer. And I'm going to attach a link. This link will be to the anchor offer, which we haven't created yet. But one more time, toggling off open link and new tab. I want this all to stay on the same tab. All right, we've created our website header. Doesn't look that great yet. I'm going to select edit section and I'm going to toggle off fill screen. I want to make sure that these links and are going to be aligned with the top and the bottom. It's not going to take up a lot of space. There we go. Now it looks a lot more like a website header. Let's go ahead and double check the mobile version because we'll have some edits to make here. Inside the mobile version of our site, let's reduce the size of that logo, make it much smaller, and we'll reduce the size of these text links here. They'll still be clickable, but much smaller. I'll scoot them up to the top. There we go. I like that a lot better. And we'll go ahead and move our button to the center and at the top and reduce the size of this header for the mobile version of our site. I don't want it to be right up against that button. There we go. That looks a lot better. 
Okay, back here in desktop view, let's create those anchor links that we just created navigation for. I'm going to double check one last time. This link is titled about, this link is titled expert, and this link here in our button is titled offer. Those are the three links we need to create. Scrolling down here to our about this awesome offer section, let's add our first anchor link. I'm going to select add block and we'll add a block of code. I'm going to pull this all the way over to the center of the page. There we go. We'll reduce the size of it, double click on it, and let's add our anchor link. This tells the computer that the identification of this specific spot on my website is labeled about. So when I've linked to hashtag about on this page, it'll take people to this section. Now, sometimes Squarespace rearranges content and resizes things when you add new blocks. I noticed that this scooted a little bit, so we'll move it back down. There we go. Let's add our other two links. Scrolling past that content, we've got a link to add here for the expert. I'll select add block. We'll add a code block. We'll pull it to the center of the page, reduce the size of it, and we're going to remove the filler text and label this anchor expert. Perfect. We've got one more to add down here at the very bottom. We'll add a block and this code block is going to be moved over to the center, pulled up to the very top. I'll double click on it. Let's remove that filler text and we'll create our anchor for the offer. We've now added the offer right here on our site. This is perfect. Okay, the last thing we need to do here on the page is double check the mobile layout. Clicking into mobile view, again, things can get rearranged by Squarespace here, which isn't always great. Let's reduce the size of that anchor and we'll pull our content for this page section up a little bit. We can pull the bottom of the page section up a little bit as well. There we go. Checking out this section. Again, we've got some more space. This is just my own aesthetic preference, but I strongly recommend clicking around and making sure the mobile version still looks great. Scrolling up here, way too much space in this section. Let's fix that. Pull this content up, pull up the scrolling marquee and reduce the size. There we go. Okay, it looks great on mobile. And we have our customized header. One last thing I almost forgot, we need to make the footer for this landing page too. Personally, I need to have legal information on every page on my website, but I don't need to have all of the links in the footer of my website. So I'm going to add a unique footer just for this landing page. I'll select add section at the very bottom. We'll add a blank section. And here I'm going to add a text block, pull it over to the center and using a little bit of video editing magic, I've added my text. There we go. I've got links to my privacy policy, terms and conditions, my legal disclaimer. And just like with the header, I don't want so much padding. So I'll select edit section, toggle off fill screen and make sure that this is a small spaced footer on my landing page. To make sure that this footer is styled the way I want it to be for my landing page. I'll vertically align it. There we go. I like that a lot better. All right, now we have a custom footer. We have a custom header with active links. We've added our anchor links. Let's go ahead and select save and make the final changes we need to make. I'm going to select exit and we'll go back to our pages menu. Here where we can see the landing page, I'm going to click on this gear icon. I want you to notice I've given the URL a very simple URL slug. That's a common best practice for landing pages, something that's easy for people to remember and easy to use in any marketing campaigns. But here under navigation is where the magic happens. We now have the ability to turn off the header and footer on this specific page. So our site-wide header and site-wide footer are now no longer visible on our landing page. A quick pro tip for you while we're here, make sure that you add an SEO title and description as well as a social share image for this specific landing page. If a link to this landing page is shared on a social media platform, it's really great to have this information updated. So again, social image and SEO. But the most important part, on your navigation, toggle off show header and show footer and select save. Now scrolling back up to the top here, let's interact with our website. If we click on more info, we'll be taken to the about page. If we click on meet the expert, we'll be taken to the expert page. And if we click on get the offer, we're right there. That's our chance to get the offer. I think this is awesome. But to be honest, there are two lines of code that I add to every landing page I create. So we're going to go ahead and do that before we call this tutorial a wrap. Clicking on the gear icon for this landing page. Under the advanced section, I'm going to add some custom code. If you're watching this on my blog, you'll find these codes directly underneath the video. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll find a link to my blog there. I can't include these characters in a YouTube description. So you'll have to head to my blog to just copy and paste this code. So this code here says anytime you see an active link, remove the underline. And anytime someone needs to scroll to something automatically through our anchor links, do that smoothly. These are the two codes that I add to every landing page. So I wanted to share them with you and I'll show you how they work. 
We'll select Save, and scrolling back up to the top of our page here, notice the underline is now gone from those links in our website header. That's now mimicking the style of the header that I have on my regular website, so I like that style a lot more. It also removed the underline from the links in my footer as well. So totally optional, but I prefer that style. Now here's what happens with that smooth scroll effect. Check out what happens when I select more info. We're now smoothly scrolling to that section. Meet the expert, we smoothly scroll there. It doesn't just jump there automatically. It takes a second for a smoother transition, which can be less disorienting for people trying to navigate your landing page. So again, I've added these under the settings for this landing page in the advanced section. I added these two codes that remove the underline and change the scroll behavior. Totally optional, but one last feature that I love to add to my custom advanced landing pages. We just did a lot of work together. And if you want to go back and review this, I've written out all of the steps in the blog post for this specific tutorial. You'll find a link to that in the description below. And if you're watching this video on my blog, just scroll down a little bit and you'll see a list of all of the steps that we took together to create this advanced landing page in our Squarespace website. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out some of my other content that I've posted because I have a lot more to teach you about all the cool things you can do with Squarespace. Thanks again for watching. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now. Find everything you need to make Squarespace uniquely yours at InsideTheSquare.co. That's InsideTheSquare.co.